Hello, everyone. My guest today is Adi Batan. She is the co-founder and CEO of Empower Solutions, which provides businesses with tools to text with their customers. Adi, are you ready to take us to the top? Oh, yeah. All right. Tell us about the company. And is this a pure play SaaS business or not? Um, it started as a pure play SaaS. We've uh, kind of done some things that aren't pure SaaS to push us to a place where we can do pure, pure SaaS. So we can talk about that. It's kind of okay. interesting. Interesting. Give us the, tease us a little bit. If you look at your total revenue over the past 12 months, how much of it is pure SaaS percentage wise? Uh, like 75%. Okay. So, so fair, a fair amount. Mostly SaaS. Yeah. All right. Let's back up. Tell us about the company. What's it do? Um, so our thesis when we started seven years ago, actually exactly today, um, was that, happy, uh, by people, the way, happy anniversary. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's quite a milestone surviving, you know, past three years. So seven yeah. years is, 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 a um, something we're pretty proud of. So the thesis has always been, people are not going to want to call businesses. They're going to want to text businesses. And, um, over time businesses have caught up to that idea, but how do you give people and businesses tools to do that in an effective way, scalable way? So what we do is exactly that. We take, um, either existing lines or give businesses new phone numbers and give them the tools they need so that they can text with uh, customers, but not on their cell phones, you know, in a, in, in a way that just doesn't scale. Uh, we give them things like, you know, documentation and templates and automations and uh, most importantly, integrations of what, what they currently use. So, so just to be clear, a consumer, Slack, a consumer right. could text a number and you have an automated solution on the back end to talk to the customer. Right. So it's automated, semi-automated or manual, depending on the business and what they need and what they can afford. Okay. And then um, you've listened to a bunch of shows, so you kind of know the drill, which I like. G give me an average here. What's the average customer pay per month, would you say? So we've gone from having customers paying like 10 bucks a month to now our average. Yeah, that's how we started seven years ago. And now our average is close to a thousand. Okay. thousand a month and yeah. uh, launched 2011. Now, what have you scaled to today in terms of total customers? We have 18,000 customers. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. So, but some of them are still in our freemium plan, which we no longer offer. And about 2,000 of them are paying. Got it. Okay. So, 18,000 free and paid, 2,000 pure play. Now, you know the drill here. If I take 2,000 times that $1,000 average per month price point, that gives you about 2 million bucks a month in revenue. Is that accurate? It's not accurate because we started at 10 bucks a month and we, we didn't kick those people off. So what's um, what's so, the updated average? If it's not a thousand, what's the average across 2000, would you say? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look. I just we, look at the last cohort. Can we basically. back into it? Do you mind if we back into it? Can you tell me general size today? What are you doing per month in revenue? Oh, no, we don't release those numbers. Okay. Well, but um, I can't tell you the, the most important thing is we keep pushing that average up, right? So I look at last quarter um, cohort and keep pushing that number up. That, that average revenue per, per business. Yeah. Can you, um, I'm not, I won't push you harder than this, but it would be valuable to get like a range, even a big, as, as big a range you want, as big as you want to keep it. I mean, you're like at a million dollar run rate or 10 million run rate. Generally, where are you? Well, one to two. Okay. Is a good range. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. That helps me sure. kind of ask better questions. Okay. Sure. So one to $2 million run rate today and walk me through how you got these 2000 customers. Where are you acquiring them from? So we, like I said, we started kind of very small SMB and, um, Worked our way up as we realized the problem with SMBs was mostly retention churn because they run out, they go out of business. But all of our customers, save for maybe five percent, have come through word of mouth. So what we worked really hard on was having extremely happy customers that then tell other businesses about us, which is not easy to do in a in a B two B setting. So you have to architect it in the right way. But right now we do no marketing at all, um, just zero ads, zero. Facebook, nothing. No and direct paid spend. No, no, no direct paid spend. Spend, and it's all coming from either existing happy customers or other um, other uh, providers that we work with. So partnerships have been helpful to us, not necessarily officially, but you know, folks that provide voice solutions. Their customers come up to them and then say, "Hey, you know, I need a texting solution. Voice is no longer enough." We made sure. A lot of those folks know about us. Got it. And, and then they say, go to these guys. Right? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, uh, when you look at growth, so you're doing a one to two million run rate today. Where were you a year ago? Uh, probably like a tenth of that. You, oh, so you've 10 X year over year. Yeah. So it took us a long time to, again, find our flow. But once we did, now what we're doing is turning the crank on what we already know how to do. Okay. But I mean, just to be clear, I mean, that is significant growth. You were doing, call it a hundred to 200 grand, uh, 
in in AR in ARR, and now you're doing one to two million. I mean, it's 10x year over year growth. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, as most of that come from adding new customers or expanding the, the historical cohort? Most of that is from adding new ones, but we've expanded almost each and every one of our historical customers. Okay. Not the really small ones, but everybody that's a mid-sized business and up, we've come to them with new products and new offerings um, that they can that they can bite into. But we've also, and that was part of the thesis with messaging was once you start using it, your volume of usage grows because people like it. And then, you know, our share of your wallet grows um, Expands. in turn. Yeah. 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 So that that has definitely happened. It just didn't happen as fast as we thought it would. But so, now at messaging, it was ubiquitous. It's, you know, some businesses have gone from like, you know, to a 10x usage than, sure. than what they used to. Sure. That's great. And you tie your pricing, obviously, axes around that usage. Exactly. That's great. Um, talk to me about churn. Churn's critical. What was your revenue churn over the past 12 months? So um, when we started out, our churn was like, 95% and now we're at two. Okay. So you're two percent per month. I'll be your two percent per month. Definitely improved on the churn side. And that's yeah. Okay. Two, and that's logo churn or revenue churn? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. That's logo churn or the revenue logo churn? churn. Logo churn. Okay, what's revenue churn? Revenue churn is a slightly higher than that, like okay. three point two. Okay. But around the same. That's good. So, I mean, look, if you, you know, take 3.2 times 12, you'd call it 36% gross revenue churn per year. Right. And, and what is your expansion on that same cohort? What are you expanding accounts by? So smaller accounts were expanding by around 15, 20%. Larger accounts, we're actually going and offering them new products or expanding more by like 40 to 45%. Okay. So So when you add in all more significant, when you add back all that expansion revenue, does it cover the 36% that you lost? Yeah. Yeah. We're about at, at 38 around okay. that. So, so we're covering and, and adding a little bit, but obviously we got to get better on that. Yeah. So b- just to be clear, you know, if you take 38 of expansion minus 36 of kind of loss, that gives you two points of growth. So your net revenue retention is 102% about, is that right? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Congrats on that. Um, t- you. you know, a lot of the, uh, talk to me about your team. You said most of the growth is, is coming from word of mouth. I want to understand kind of what powers that. So what's your team look like today? How many people? So we're 12 people and most of that is engineering, obviously, <laughs> but um, customer success is the, is a big part of, of how we get folks to love us. Uh, but how we many do something, of the 12 are customer success? Um, three. Do they, are and, they quota carrying or no? No. Okay. But they are measured by, by retention and by expansion. Yeah. So they, they, it's not direct quota, but it's um, their bonus is tied to that. And one of the things we do really well is we actually force the customer to use the product or we kick them out. Yeah. And that's something that might be counterintuitive to some, but our customer success people, um, the, we have certain tools that we know if a customer doesn't use them, they're not going to stick around. They're not going to get value. And so their, their whole job is to push the businesses into using those tools. And once they do, then we can continue the conversation, continue the relationship and come in and say, here are the metrics from using these tools. Sure. Time to expand. Here's here's yeah. another product. So, so that was key, figuring that out, customer success. So of those that 12, was. three of them are CS. Where's everybody based? Um, we are a remote company. Our engineering is based in Israel, actually. So um, gives us uh, actually really good flexibility in terms of uh, engineering costs. And we have folks on the East Coast doing customer success and support and folks on the West Coast. We're on the West Coast, so we, we want to cover um, as much uh, as possible. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so when you look at and include your CS folks, when you look at your fully weighted CAC to get a new, you know, you said you're signing them up at a thousand bucks a month right now. What are you paying fully weighted to get that customer? Um, long cycles. So we're paying... Some are the, on the on the big guys, the enterprises that we're signing up. We're spending about six months. Okay, so about signing six up grand. an account. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, you're spending. Just to be clear. Six months is your sales cycle or your payback period. So six months is how much we're spending on the big accounts, and the payback period on those guys is usually two months. The medium accounts, the more mainstream folks that you're just kind of signing up online with a video demo, you don't have to handshake. Um, those folks have um, an eight month payback. Okay, so two to eight Where the, payback. Yeah, yeah. Well, the main cost of that is you got to get them on a demo sometimes multiple times, and then it's time, right? Yeah. It's a time of your people that that are spending their, you know, answering questions, doing the demo. That ha, have you bootstrapped the company or have you raised? So we raised uh, six years ago when we just started. 
raised a total of three million, okay. and we haven't raised since. That's great. And are you cash flow um, positive today? Almost. We're oh, close to it. So close. So close. Close to it. Hopefully by the end of the year. And then are you gonna to- are you gonna want to go raise then again or no? Uh, good question. Talk to me in a few months. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it's not tricky. Sure. Let me I'm ask. Sure. So the me- reason we didn't raise again is because we didn't want you know. We didn't want that pressure to grow before we knew we actually knew what we were doing and had something that that was fantastic. Now that we do, the dilemma comes again: like, should we, should we, or shouldn't we? No, that makes that makes good sense. So you're almost cash flow positive. Should you? Shouldn't you? Venture debt is becoming very hot right now. Is that something you've ever looked at so you can avoid dilution? I've considered it. I know all the venture debt guys here locally. Yeah, uh, it's 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 on my radar. I have a few friends that have done it. I think it makes a lot of sense if you look at the at the financials. Um, you know, it's it's not just a dilution that you're that, that that's obviously a big deal. It's also the you know you get VCs in, they have their own agenda, right? Where you get venture debt, they just want they want to you to pay back. That's yep. it, right? So that's all you got to do to keep executing. With VC, it starts to be you know this guy's raising a fund, that woman's you know maybe leaving. You start having these different dynamics. Um, and, and we don't know that we want that. Yeah. Adi, right. you're dead on. Let's, uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, so I just read this one and I'm really excited about it. I think you were going to ask. Um, it's really great. I actually bought a copy for a friend, high growth handbook. You familiar with it? Nope. High growth handbook. That's good. Okay. It's by El Gil. Okay. Um, he's an entrepreneur. He used to be a Twitter. He sold a company, uh, I think to Twitter and maybe one to Google as well. Uh, high growth handbook, highly recommend, um, flipping through it. Brand new book in the last few months. Good. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, Max Lefkin. Yep. Number three, what is your favorite online tool for building your business? Uh, for building the business. I'm a huge fan of Slack because we're a remote team. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? <laughs> so that's a tricky question. Uh, two to three. You, get, have, you uh, only sleep for two to three hours? Yeah. So I have a startup and I have a two-year-old and a four-month-old. So, okay. So ma- married? Yes. Okay. Married, two kids. Um, that, but that can't be healthy. I mean, you're, you're, you have to catch up at some point. You can't go on three hours of sleep every night. Right. But when you have a four-month-old, you just kind of have to juggle. So this will go away hopefully soon when he sleeps through the night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, I'll sometimes... Um, you know, just take a break and take a nap. Yeah, very good. And do you want me asking me about how old you are? Um, you're 41. Okay. 2018, 41. 40, yeah. 40 years young. All right. Uh, yeah. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, start sooner, iterate faster, right? Um, yeah. I didn't know entrepreneurship existed when I was 20 years old, honestly. Uh, only when I came to Silicon Valley 10, 12 years ago. Um, was I looking around saying, Hey, wait, lots of people do this and I can do it too. And it's exciting. And I love it. I, I just, something I didn't even occur to me. Right. I was on the path to, I used to be a lawyer. I was on the path to, you know, get a job, do well, become a partner, all that stuff that just wasn't as exciting as entrepreneurship is and is building something from scratch is. So that's what I wish I'd known. Just Guys, start, sooner. start sooner from a B again, founded Empower Solutions 2011 today, doing between a million and two million bucks in terms of run rate. They've 10 X year over year. They raised 3 million bucks about six years ago, hoping that cash flow profitability here in the next couple of months. They're serving about 2000 paying customers. Uh, a 36% gross revenue churn per year, 38% expansion. So added together about 102% net revenue retention each year. They've got about 12 people all over remote locations. Again, uh, building, paying about 6,000 bucks to acquire a customer payback periods anywhere between two and eight months. Abhi, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me.